Negative population growth has villages trying new ways to encourage families to have more children. 90,000 renminbi per child. That's crazy. Each Lin family baby born into the village will receive 90,000 yuan. I am Elise Ribbons, and today we will investigate the childbearing subsidy in Huangzhougang village. I am Elise Ribbons. As a mother of a three-year-old living in Chengdu, China, I find that many of the families around me are often very trepidatious about having more than one child, or even any children at all. Recently on Douyin, there's been this video making the rounds, a table full of renminbi, and all of these excited new parents picking up their cash. Why? Because this village is giving out 90,000 renminbi per child. What? That's crazy, but it's also a project not unlike a lot of other programs going on in China and the world, trying to encourage young people to have more children. Now, how successful is this project? I don't know, but I think that we can get a chance to speak with some people and especially to some young moms to find out a little bit more how they feel about this money. Let's go. Here I am in Huangzhougan, a village near Yingzai Township, close to Lianjiang in Guangdong Province. According to some sources, this was the first place in China to implement birth subsidies. Ever since 2017, China's birth rate has been falling rapidly. This village was first to take the initiative, providing a subsidy of 30,000 renminbi for every newborn child. Last year, China experienced negative population growth for the first time in 60 years, ranking second to last in global birth rates. Despite its tiny population of just over 2,600, this village has witnessed the birth of over 190 newborns. Hi. Hey. Hello. <laughs> 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 <
But what do the locals have to say about it? What do the village's families think about having children? Was a 90,000 RMB subsidy the key to stimulating birth rates? Uncle Kun introduces me to her recipient family. Hello. Hello. Hey, you are. Hello. Lin Chaojun and Su Mei got married in 2017. For the next three years, they tried for a baby. In 2020, their hopes were dashed when Su Mei underwent a comprehensive medical examination at the hospital. Doctors told her she'd be unable to get pregnant without undergoing IVF. Many of China's young city residents are reluctant to have children. Not so in Huangdugan village. Here, the concept of carrying on the family lineage is deeply ingrained. To families here, having children is important. However, to this young couple, the cost of IVF, well over 100,000 RMB, was daunting. Su Mei and her husband left Guangzhou, returning to their hometown to cut spending and save up money for IVF. Yang 哦,拿到這一筆錢啊。So I think it's very interesting that when discussing this 90,000 RMB, it's not about you know her decision to have a child or not, it related more to the fact that she and her husband don't fight over money now, which also might preclude her decision to want to have more children, right? Nowadays, Su Mei is a full-time mom, while her husband, Lin Chaojun, works part-time jobs close to home. For this family of three, the 90,000 renminbi subsidy has given them some much-needed space to breathe, lessening financial burdens. 那你觉得为什么年轻女孩不太愿意多生
，你上一个，你个个幼儿园要两千多块钱哦，嗯、一个月啊，你要读小学也是很多钱的吧？要是郑州飞了十多万了、啊，搞不掂呢、啊嗯，不敢上，不是不想上。Over the course of the past two decades, China has witnessed mass urbanization. Gutting rural populations and affecting rapid change to social structures. More young people than ever before are pursuing tertiary education, and the age of marriage and childbirth continues to rise. The cost of giving birth is higher, and the younger generation's ideas about families have adapted to the times. Although I saw that in rural areas, young couples still value the concept of carrying on the family lineage. They still want one or two children, but unlike the older generations, they no longer pursue the traditional notion of 多子多福 more children, more blessings. Wow, this is so beautiful. What place is this? This is the Wan Lin Shi's Zhongqi Temple. Oh, this is Wan Lin Shi's Temple. Ah, just this temple. What does this temple do? This temple is to keep the ancient priests of the Zhongqi Temple here every year. 就是冬节前两天来祭祖，一千多人呐、啊，几十人呐、啊，就在那里拜斋。这个全都是林氏家族的哈。啊，林氏家族那是老祖宗。那你知道你的是哪一派吗？他要算下来，我是十七代，要死以后才放生进去。哇哦！所以你的长辈在不在？在，我爸爸就在哪里了啊。哦 ，That's so cool。爸爸妈妈还在那里了哈。真有意思，嗯，好羡慕，因为在美国我们没有这种呢。这里一共就是，呃，二十代了，有二十代，二十代了。哇、wow、！This prayer to gods isn't the only part of it. It's not about religion. It's about family and family values. The ancient Confucian tradition of praying to your ancestors is very much in evidence here in Huangzhougan Village. As you can see from the Cetang next door, there's thousands of names of you know the Lin family and what it represents to be able to spend time uh, thanking your ancestors. And a lot of what this money is for, I think, is to preserve that tradition and that culture to keep the Lin family tradition alive. For over 400 years, Huangzhougan Village has been home to the Lin family. For generations, descendants of the Lin clan have thrived here. Right now, the village is home to over 2,600 residents. But in recent years, they've also witnessed a shrinking population. It was a strong sense of duty to his clan that held sway over Lin Xiang, an immigrant to Australia, and a local leader when he decided to donate two large sums of money as birth subsidies to descendants of the Lin clan in the village. As the sun sets, the villagers are finally free to embrace the most delightful period of the day. I ask them about their views on the birth subsidies. 他们为什么不愿意生啊？就是说负担重啊。虽然说是说免费的哈，但是他一个儿一个月也要几百块了哈。嗯。对于农村来说哈，这一笔钱也是有一点难哦。是啊。不像呢，他们呢有有工作的哈，我们农村人哈，呃，现在小孩，呃，攒不到钱呢，现在哈。对对。我小孩还没有老婆，我也想拿这笔钱了。你有几个孩子？三个。这个你是不是享受了这个三万块钱的那个？是啊是啊。哦，那你拿到了那个三万块钱，有帮助吗？有很大的帮助。那你打算再省吗？不打算了，三个可以，三个就可以了啊、嗯。可以了，可以了。嗯。小花 ，a mother of three， quit her job in Guangzhou to become a full-time homemaker. I make an appointment to visit her at her home the very next day. Here in the countryside, the rain comes without warning. 
Silence envelopes everything, and I hardly see anyone on my journey across the village. Hello. Xiao Hua is a child of the 80s. In 2011, she met and married her husband, Lin Chaomuo, in Guangzhou, where they were blessed with a daughter. Initially, Xiao Hua planned on having just the one child, but three years on, she got the feeling her daughter was lonely, so the couple gave birth to a son. <laughs> <laughs> Raising two children in Guangzhou proved to be more stressful than the couple could handle. They decided that Xiao Hua should return to their hometown with the children while her husband stayed in Guangzhou for work. A few years later, when birth subsidies were introduced, Xiao Hua welcomed her third child. <笑>我的好 那他真的是运气好 很影响很大的the subsidies can help alleviate some of the financial pressures of raising a family. In some ways, they play a big role in the decisions couples make about having children. The subsidies are a factor they consider when weighing the pros and cons of having more children. Xiao Hua was born into a large family with six siblings. While previous generations of rural families were heavily influenced by their traditional notion of more children, more blessings, today's youngsters aren't convinced. <笑>所以总共差不多三千<笑> <笑> Xiao Hua and her children have lived in Huangzhugan village for 10 years. Here, far from the exorbitant costs of the urban sprawl, she's convinced her children will grow up happier in the idyllic natural beauty of the countryside. Hajiati,一起兼顾,这样最好。You know, it was really interesting speaking with Xiao Hua, not just because it's so impressive that she's raising three children and spending all day working in the fields, too, but 
you could get a sense that she sort of wishes she still had the independence and freedom that she would have had if she kept working in Guangzhou. So while she wouldn't trade her life, she's definitely hoping that her daughters are able to make different choices. Hmm. In recent years, China's government has introduced an array of new policies to stimulate birth rates. During the annual meetings of the NPC and the CPPCC topics like the implementation of the two-child policy, the three-child policy, extending maternity leave for women, and including reproductive medical services and health insurance, can all be seen trending on social media. For Lin Guangjin's family, mornings are a busy time. Bye -bye. Their younger son attends a private kindergarten in the village, which costs around 3,000 to 4,000 renminbi per semester. A school bus picks him up in the mornings and brings him back home after the day's activities. In 2015, Lin Guanjin and his wife, Wu Guanzhan, chose to leave Shenzhen and return to their hometown to start a family, welcoming their first daughter. Encouraged by the subsidies, the couple soon gave birth to two sons. Hello. 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 Uh, 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 I'm Liu Suyin. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello. Why did you choose to have a Yo 这是认认真真算的话,一年要十二三万开销。哇,养孩子并不便宜哈。啊,养孩子。大部分的钱确实花的在学费上。学费啊,呃,有时候,呃,吃的,买水果啊,有时候买水果啊,买一些营养品给他
wanting them to become dragons or phoenixes. I've noticed that villagers are starting to pay more attention to their children's education, something that increases the cost of raising a child. Lianxiang has invested 5 million renminbi to renovate the old school building in the village. Now it's just as good as the schools in town. Recently, Lin Kun has proposed the establishment of a scholarship fund to support economically disadvantaged but academically excellent and well-behaved students in the village. It will also reward families that instill strong moral values in their children. If the scholarship is established, I suppose it's an indirect way of encouraging childbirth. What I've discovered in this village is that while the money is helpful and can alleviate a lot of problems that a family or even a village as a whole might have, every parent had the same concern and that was for education. So if somehow we can alleviate this education difficulty, I think that programs like this can be very useful.